our pastor. Greet him with a hearty amen. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank God for another day that the Lord has made. Yes. We are rejoice and be glad in it. Thank God for our mind to be assembled in the house. I pray one more time to hear what thus said the Lord. Thank God for the beginning to be present with us on tonight, Wednesday night, midweek service. We have a uh, another lesson tonight. The lesson tonight is entitled uh, "Clear Apostasy." Mm -hmm. Clear Apostasy, mm -hmm. and we're going to deal with that on tonight, uh, as we are still dealing with. Uh, the Apostle Paul, still dealing with the, the, the epistles of Apostle Paul. This one is also to minister Timothy. So we're mm -hmm. still in the book of uh, Timothy, dealing mm -hmm. with the epistles. Getting ready. We're getting ready for uh, the Lord's return. Yeah. We're getting ready for the Lord's return. And, uh, because Jesus is coming soon. Yeah. We can see it all around us. Jesus is he's coming soon. And so it's our job not only to get ready, but to remain ready. For we know we don't want to be like the five uh, foolish virgins. When the cry is made, we want to be, we want to make sure our, our lamps are still burning. Yes. And so we're going to pray and we're going to get into our lesson tonight. Thank God for uh, the, the generosity, the liberality. We know that the Lord loves a cheerful giver, and we pray that the Lord will bless you accordingly. We know that the Lord will bless you. And so uh, we just thank God for your gifts. If you want to be a blessing to the ministry, if the Holy Ghost moves on your heart to be a blessing to the ministry, you can send your gifts to givelify.com. Uh, New Beginning Community Church, Lamore, California. And we sure the Lord, I'm sure that the Lord will bless you according. Uh, so let us pray and prepare to uh, get into our lesson. Be gracious and heavenly Father, in the precious name of Jesus, Lord, we come tonight thanking you once again for your tender mercy and your kindness. Thank you, Lord God, for just being such an awesome God. We thank you for being the only God that you're sovereign. And beside you, there is no other God. There is no Savior, Lord God. We thank you for sacrificing the life of your Son, Lord God, to, to condemn the sins of the world, to, to atone for the sins of the world, to pay the price, Lord God, nail them to the cross. And so we just thank you, Lord God, on tonight. We ask that you would move in this place according to thine will, and we're praising and glorify you in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. A clear apostasy. A clear apostasy. Mm -hmm. And we'll be coming out of 1 Timothy, 4th chapter, 1st verse. And I'll be reading from the King James like a customer, and it, it reads like this. Uh, Four and one says, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrine, doctrines of devils. That's what we're dealing with tonight. Now I kind of uh, kind of thought this was interesting because uh Paul didn't necessarily say that they were individuals. He didn't necessarily say that some were captive by seducing spirits. Mm -hmm. You know, so I found the text, the language kind of interesting. He said that some shall depart from the faith. Mm -hmm. All right. And Give, giving heed to seducing spirits or deceiving spirits. Mm -hmm. Some 
shall depart from the faith. And so when you when you understand that, that is uh, that is apostasy. And so apostasy says a falling away from God's truth, departing from the faith, and the one that we're going to pretty much deal with tonight, it says the deliberate and permanent uh, rejection of Christianity after a previous profession of faith in it. That's where we lean it on tonight. A deliberate, permanent rejection of Christianity after a previous uh, profession of faith in it. Understanding the text said, in the latter times, it said, some shall depart from the faith, which mm -hmm. is what Paul is calling the apostasy in the last days, where, pe where people are uh, deliberately, permanently, deliberately and permanently rejecting uh, Christianity after previously professing a faith in it. And so, another word that we're going to look closely at and describe is that word expression. And that word expression says uh, clearly, mm -hmm. manifestly, it said in express words, it says openly for a specific purpose, solely, plainly, certainly, and directly. Okay. So putting this, so put this together for, uh, for the body of Christ, for the church. Paul is letting Timothy know. And so, so kind of twofold. He let Timothy know so he don't get, he don't become discouraged. You and I have to understand the times that we're living in. Mm -hmm. The word of God will not have us ignorant so we will not become discouraged. Paul told Titus that the spirit speaketh clearly, mm -hmm. clearly. It speaking clearly, it speaking directly, and it speak for this specific purpose that in the latter times, some is going to depart from the faith, which is the apostasy. They're going to depart from the faith. They're going to reject Christianity. Uh, they're going to deliberately and permanently reject Christianity after they have uh, had a profession of faith in it. Mm -hmm. It's not talking about someone that has never claimed to be a believer. And so right. you and I have to understand the danger, the danger of uh, departing from the faith. There's a danger there's a danger departing from the faith. Mm -hmm. Because once, once we depart from the faith, Paul is letting Timothy know that we're subject to take heed to the seducing spirit, the, de the deceiving spirit. And so we must keep the faith. We must keep the faith because if we fail to keep the faith, then we are open and subject to seducing spirits. And Paul let Timothy know that the Holy Ghost speaks clearly in these latter times that these, these things is going to happen. And so we cannot become discouraged. We cannot become discouraged. We have to continue to keep the faith. We have to continue to trust and believe God in spite, in spite of all the things that is going on, not only in our life, but all the things that's going on around us. 
that come to discourage our faith. And so, First uh, Timothy four and once, I'm sorry, First Timothy uh, one and nineteen. We'll go there and read First Timothy one and nineteen, and it says, holding faith and a good conscience, which some having put away concerning faith have made shipwreck. The word of God is warning you and I that if, if we put away our faith or we depart from our faith, we are subject to make shipwreck. We are subject to become shipwrecked. And we don't have, we don't have to become shipwrecked. All we have to do is hold fast. Verse 19 said, holding faith and a good conscience with some uh, having put away concerning faith. Some have departed from the faith and they made shipwreck. We don't want to become shipwrecked in our life. We want to hold on to, to the faith because the, in the faith are the promises of God. And the promises in Christ, they are yea and they are amen. God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. And so when we understand that this walk is by faith, and there's going to be times in these latter days that we're living that we're going to have to walk alone because we cannot depart from the faith. The Spirit speaks clearly. The Spirit speaks clearly that in the latter times there shall be some that shall depart from it. And so sometimes you're going to have to walk alone. Sometimes you're going to have to stand alone. Sometimes you're going to have to stand still and see the salvation of the Lord and know that he is God. Right. We, you and I cannot afford to depart from the faith. You and I cannot afford to give up our confidence in God. He have, we have come this far by faith. We have come too far by faith. And, and so Paul is letting Timothy know that the, the Spirit, the Holy Ghost is speaking clearly, speaking clearly Right. That these times is coming. Mm -hmm. That people are departing from the faith. People are deliberately and permanently rejecting Christianity after having a, uh, after have professed to have faith in Christ. Ah. Let us know. Let us know that we are living in that time. Second mm -hmm. uh, Timothy four and four. 2 Timothy 4 and 4 says, And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. Mm -hmm. As a believer in Christ, as a child of God, we cannot depart from the truth of God and turn to fables and superstitions and hearsays and, 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 and all that type of stuff. This is, this, Paul is letting Titus I'm sorry, Paul is letting Timothy know that when he see that he gonna clearly see the apostasy. The apostasy is gonna clearly, clearly be seen. And this is how to identify is that when we turn from the truth of God and start believing in fables or superstitions, it is just it is letting us know that the Lord is soon to come. Yes. Let us know that the Lord is soon to come. So the child of God must continue to hold fast his faith because these spirits are seducing spirits. Right. They, are sedu they are deceiving spirits. Mm -hmm. They will have you believe the, a lie rather than the truth. And the mm -hmm. truth of the matter is, it's not the will of God that any man perish, but that all, all men come to repentance. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. People are turning from the truth that Jesus Christ died for our sins. They're leaving, they're leaving the faith where the truth is being preached mm -hmm. and they're taking and they're heaping, they're heeding uh, spirits where their flesh is being comforted and feel mm -hmm. good. Now, now, nowadays, if you're not entertaining the flesh, people won't go to your church. 
If you're not entertaining the flesh, people won't. They say church, they say that that church is boring and we're going to go somewhere else because people don't want the truth. Hmm. And Paul is letting Timothy know this is the apostasy. We are living in the latter or the last days and these things are going to happen. So don't become discouraged when you find yourself walking by yourself. Uh -huh. Don't become discouraged. Keep your faith. If you trust and believe God can pull you through, keep your faith. It doesn't matter what the situation looks like. It doesn't matter what's going on. It doesn't matter the condition. The Lord is well able. He can do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or think according to the power that worketh in you. Now the power that worketh in you and I is the faith that we have. And he said if we have faith as a grain of mustard seed, it said, we can tell that mountain to be thou removed. Oh, in other words, we can speak to our problems. Right. We can speak to our situations. And we can call and summons them the comfort of the Lord in our lives. The right. Lord is able to take us through. Ah, I feel the power of the Holy Ghost right there. Mm -hmm. The Spirit speaks expressly. And it said, in these latter times, in these last days that we're living right now, it said some, not all, it said some shall depart from the faith. In other words, some gonna give up, some gonna turn back, some gonna say it was better if I go back out in, into the world, it was better if I go back out into the life that I used to live. Seducing spirits, that's a seduce, that's a deceiving spirit. Mm -hmm. It is never better to go back to bondage. Right. It is never better to go back to the possession of sin, never better. It is always, always better to press towards the mark. We have to, our prize is forward. We have to press towards the mark of the high calling, which is Christ Jesus. Ah, I'm about to get excited, but let me stay on my subject. Yeah, all right. uh, Hebrews, the third chapter, the 12th verse. We won't keep you long tonight. We're going to be in and out tonight. Hebrews, the 12th. I'm sorry, Hebrews the third chapter in the 12th verse. Mm -hmm. And it said, take heed, brother, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. Paul, mm -hmm. the Hebrew writer, is warning the believer. The warning in these last days is, is to take heed, brother, lest, lest there become an evil heart of unbelief. Lest the spirit of unbelief, lest the spirit of doubt, lest these spirits uh, seduce you and deceive you. Mm -hmm. He said, take heed, brother, lest there be in any of your evil heart of unbelief and in departing from the faith. All, all the enemy, all Satan wants you and I to do is become discouraged. Mm -hmm. He wants you and I to become discouraged because he knows if you and I become discouraged, then we'll turn and we'll walk away from what we believe in. That's all he wants. But the, but the Hebrew writer is telling, telling you, say, look, take heed, brethren. Take heed, pay attention. We have to watch. We have to watch. We have to watch our emotions. We all have right. to watch how we feel. We have to watch our interactions. Take heed. We have to watch. We have to pray, because if we're not careful, that evil heart of unbelief will have you departing from the faith. Mm -hmm. it, 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 it come, the Bible lets us know that Satan comes not but for the steal, kill, mm -hmm. and to destroy. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, I have come that you may have life right. and life more abundantly. You have to understand, but the seducing spirits wants you and I to forfeit our hope. The seducing spirit wants you and I to forfeit our faith. But the Bible is warning you and I to hold fast, stand, stand uh, steadfast, unmovable, always abounding, always growing, always multiplying in our faith, always growing in, in the word, in the work of the Lord. Because Jesus Christ is coming back. Mm -hmm. And as, and if we if we turn and depart from the faith, 
we're going to run into a seducing spirit. Mm. And, oh, my God. We don't want to run into a, we don't want to run into a seducing spirit to the point where we think we are right when we're not all right. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about salvation wise. I'm talking to, I'm only talking about salvation. Uh, 2 Peter 317. 2 Peter 317. 2 Peter 3, 17. We'll go there. 2 Peter 3, 17 says, Ye therefore, beloved, seeing ye know these things before, beware, lest ye also being led away with the error of the wicked fall from your own steadfastness. There we go. He said, Ye therefore, beloved, Seeing that you already that you know these things before, you already know these things before. Be beware, lest you also being led away with the error of the wicked, fall from your own steadfastness. Like I stated earlier, all the enemy, all the enemy wants you and I to do is to become discouraged. When we become discouraged, then he knows he has a greater chance to make us depart from the faith. If our situations and our circumstances, if they make us become a downtrodden, lower spirit, if they make us become uh, uh, disencouraged or, or, or not encouraged, I have a word discouraged. I'm looking for. Discouraged, yeah. Discouraged. If they make us become discouraged, mm -hmm. in the enemy, he'll rush in like a flood. But I heard the Bible say when he does that, the Lord will lift up a standard against you. Mm -hmm. He'll lift up a, 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 a banner against you and let him know that you and I are marked as God's child. You're not going to just run in and destroy this one as long as we hold fast our faith. If we keep our faith in spite of what we're looking at, because this walk is by faith, not by sight. We have to know, we have to know that the Lord will deliver us. We have to know that the Lord will bring us through because Jesus declared to his father that he did not lose one soul that his father gave him, Amen. not one. He said, I am able to raise it up in the last day or raise it up against that day. So even if it looks like I'm going down, even if it looks like you're going down, Jesus is able to raise it up. Woo! All right. He has the authority. He's able to raise it up. And he said, look, he said, look, my beloved. He said, look, beloved, seeing you know these things before, beware, lest ye also be led away with the error of the wicked. Fall from your own steadfastness. That's the one thing that you never want to do is to fall from your own faithfulness. You don't ever want to fall from your own steadfastness because it is required of a steward, of all stewards, that they be found faithful. We have to be found faithful at, as having professed Christianity. We have to be found faithful. Mm -hmm. And we cannot depart from the faith because the Spirit clearly warned Timothy of the apostasy in the latter time. And that's what's happening right now. Mm -hmm. People are saying, oh, no, I don't want to go to church. People are saying, oh, no, I don't have to go to church. This is apostasy. This is falling from the faith. All right. And these are seducing spirits that seducing people right out of the body of Christ, not even understanding that they are being deceived, that they are being seduced by these spirits. No, mm -hmm. I, I, you know, when you depart from the truth of God, that's the description mm -hmm. of, of apostasy. When you depart from the truth of God, that's what, that's what apostasy is. Departing from the truth of God and falling for these fables or these seducing spirits or these superstitions or I don't want to be negative. But we have to hold fast to our faith. We're going to go to uh, we're going to go to 2 Timothy. We're going to go back to 2 Timothy. Mm -hmm. Back to 2 Timothy. We almost, 
out of here. We're going to go back to 2 Timothy, uh, the third chapter. 2 Timothy, the third chapter. And I'm reading, and I'm reading from the King James Version. But so if, if my if my uh, scriptures sound a little different from yours, that's why, because I'm reading from the King James. Mm -hmm. uh, 2 Timothy, the third chapter, third chapter, verse 1 through 5. And it says, This know also that in the last days perilous, perilous times shall come. Peril, perilous times are troubled times. Or difficult times. Raise your hand if you're living in difficult times. Raise your hand if you're living in perilous times. Mm -hmm. The word of God is letting right. us know. In the last days, in these last days that we're living in, we're living in perilous of time. Mm -hmm. We're living in difficult, troubled times. We're living in uh, systematic racism. We're living in coronavirus. We're living. We're living in all these different things. This is the last day, but. These things are not to make us move our faith one bit. Because right. the Bible is letting us know that we are in the last days, so these things accompany the last day. So you and I as a believer, we should look up because mm -hmm. our Redeemer is drawing near. Mm -hmm. Our redemption is drawing near. Not, not to panic and become scared because of what our government or any, anybody else say. Uh, verse 2. 2 Timothy 3 and 2. It said, For men shall be lovers of their own self, covets, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy. Verse 3. Without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, incontinent uh, fierce, despisers of those that are good. Verse 4. Traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, and finally, final verse 5, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. Now, it tells you from such turn away, because those that, those descriptions are those, those offenses that we just read, they, they are signs of apostasy. And I know a lot of times we don't think so. Because we, as humans, as flesh, we have found a way to justify doing foul. <laughs> Might as well make it plain. We have, found, we have found a way to justify being foul. Mm -hmm. But if you are a brother, as the language speaks, you or I or brethren or sister, and if we are practicing these things, covetous, boasters, blasphemers, that's apostasy. We have departed from the faith. We have departed from the truth of God. We have fallen into these seducing spirits. What spirit, what spirit told you it was our right to covet? Mm -hmm. That's a deceiving Spirit is God said we are not to covet. We're not to be covetous. So if you and I, if you and I have found a way to justify being coveted mm -hmm. or coveted, covetousness, that's a deceiving spirit. That's a seducing spirit. All right. We have fallen, we have fallen for that fable. We have fallen for that. He said, we're living in the last days. And he said, perilous of times are going to come. Perilous times are going to come. Difficult times, troubled times. It said men will become, it, men, mankind, what? men and women, mankind, humanity. Mm -hmm. It said mankind, men will become lovers of themselves. Mm -hmm. And they will begin to turn away from the truth of God and begin to practice these things that we just read. Clear apostles. Clear apostles. But the remedy for that is to repent. The remedy for that is to acknowledge in the area that I am wrong, that you are wrong, and repent. Turn from it. Be zealous to repent. 
be quick to repent once you realize that I've been wrong in covetous. I've been wrong in being high-minded. And because other than that, this is the latter times, and this is apostasy. The Spirit spoke clearly about that. Clearly. One more scripture, and I'm going to let you go. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take you back to 2 Peter. 2 Peter 2.14. We're going to give you up after that. 2 Peter 2.14. Second Peter 2.14 says, having eyes full of adultery, and that cannot cease from sin, beguiling unstable souls, and heart they have exercised with covetous practice, cursed children. Let me read that again. Wow, I chopped that up bad. Having eyes full of adultery and and that cannot cease from sin, beguiling unstable souls, and heart they have exercised with covetous practices, cursed children. And heart they have exercised with covetous practice, cursed children. This individual is clear apostles. When you turn, when you go back up and look at your description, when you turn, from the truth of God. Clear apostasy. The Spirit speaketh expressly, comma, in the latter times, some shall mm -hmm. depart from the faith, take, taking you know, heed to seducing spirit. spirit. These spirits, they left the truth of God and they have eyes that is full of adultery. Mm -hmm. That's apostasy. Because thou should not commit adultery when you depart from the truth of God's word. Mm -hmm. That's the time that we're living in, the latter time. So, and he said, beguiling, beguiling unstable souls, deceiving people, Deceiving people, deceiving unstable souls, taking advantage of people, taking advantage of the less fortunate mentally, physically, spiritually. When you, be, when you become, when you start beguiling unstable souls, this is apostasy. Paul is telling Timothy, look, we in the last days, these things are going, these things is happening in the body of Christ. Timothy being a minister, he has to look out, he has to see this, he has to speak against this and warn against this. Every, uh, All right. Because the church has been given the charge to preach repentance and forgiveness of sin. If I don't preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, I have turned from the truth of God's word and I become a preacher of apostasy. I, be, I, I, I am preaching to you uh, from a seducing spirit or seduce or a deceived spirit, a false, a foul spirit. But as it is always, we encourage you to repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sin and allow the Lord to fill you with the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. We're living in the last days. And the Spirit has speak expressly, the Spirit has spoken clearly the apostasy that's going on around us. Mm -hmm. Where, you know, we don't, if you're not careful, we don't believe anything spiritually anymore. We call, we're in a place now where we call wicked stuff spiritual. Mm -hmm. You say, oh, that's, how oh, he's spiritual. No. <laughs> spiritual is not only being uh, baptized with the Holy Spirit, but spiritual, most of all, is living according to the Word of God. Right. If I'm not living according to the truth of God, I have fallen into apostasy, and I'm in danger of falling into seducing or deceiving spirits. When I can believe that foul is okay, 
I'm falling. I'm sinking. All right. When I can reject the description said, when I can reject Christianity after have professed my faith in it, apostasy, I'm falling. Uh, so we're gonna give you a we pray we can't we can't preach and teach the whole Bible in 30 minutes. So we pray that the Lord will touch your heart and mind and uh that he would bring you to repentance. He would bring you to the con to being concerned about where you're going to spend eternity. Because mm -hmm. we, we're going to live here one day. And so, but we will rise again. Mm -hmm. Everybody. We will rise again. Some to eternal life. Some to eternal uh, condemnation. But we will rise again in the resurrection. Jesus said, I am the resurrection. So we will rise again. He said, every knee going to bow, every tongue going to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God. All right, I'm going to let you go. Bow here. Be gracious in heavenly Father. In the precious name of Jesus. We thank you once again for the visitation of your spirit on tonight. We thank you, Lord God, for allowing us to share in your word to your people. We know that you love us. You sacrificed your life for us, Lord, that we would be saved, Lord God, that we would not have to spend eternity condemned and apart from your presence, apart from your glory. We thank you, Lord, for sending your word, for we know that you sent your word and it healed us, Lord God. You washes us with your word. You are preparing the people for your glory. And we thank you. We praise you. We ask that you would take us from this place, never from your presence. We pray bless a blessing on those, Lord God, that are under the sound of our voice. Move in their life according to your purpose and according to their needs. And we'll praise you and glorify you. In Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.